actually to nominate Olivier Fayol for the Matei Dogan Prize. Uh, it's Florence Egel, who is the director of the Center for Politi European Studies and Comparative Politics at Sciences Po Paris, and I, research professor Emerita Ocenerez in the same center. So I'll speak in our name and she'll add a final word. We are very happy that the ECPR followed our recommendation and gave the prize to Olivier Fillon. We have known Olivier for some 30 years now. Since the time he was preparing his PhD dissertation about street demonstration at Sciences Po, and more specifically at Sevipof, the Center for the Study of French Political Life, at the time, Florence and I were both affiliated to that center. And uh, uh, we both consider him as an outstanding scholar, bringing a major contribution to European political science, which is the field of the prize. And I'll just try to quickly list his qualities. First, it was already said, he is amazingly productive. It's difficult to keep pace. For the moment, I've counted 209 articles and books and contribution. Two, it's a very thorough researcher. He has explored in depth all the facets of social movements and protests, demonstration, police repression, activism, and also in-depth studies of specific movements, anti-AIDS, the Arab Springs, feminist movements, anti-globalization, May 68, and more recently, the French Yellow Vests movement. Three, he has an insatiable intellectual curiosity, which brought him very early to go beyond the French case and look at the work across the channel, across the Atlantic. And he played the part of a go-between, which is really important, importing the work and translating the work of Werther Taylor, Doug McAdam, or Clark MacPhail, and that's very important for us. For he has a very sharp critical eye, I would even say sometimes a stripping eye. And you must read his criticism of protest event analysis or of the political opportunity structures problems or the very concept of revolution. Five, he has a very strong concern for methodology and uh, the work for instance he did on how can you make representative a sample of a survey you do in the middle of a demonstration that's really worth looking at. Six, he is a wonderful teacher. He captivates his audience. He has supervised some 30 PhD dissertations and he has followed all his students throughout time, helping them as much as he could. So for all of these reasons, we have the feeling, Florence and I, that it's the right award at the right moment to the right man. Bravo, Olivier, you really deserve it. And I leave the final word to Florence. I will uh, just add uh, something that maybe you you didn't didn't mention that uh, in your talk, Nona, is that Olivier is also a, a real uh, entrepreneur, research entrepreneur. He has launched a lot of uh, collective projects, uh, and uh, recently he has done a, a big big project about the biographical consequences of activism, and he. He worked on the former activist during uh, 68 uh, events in France, and it was really a, a very, very interesting work. So he has initiated a, a new dynamics of research within the field of mobilization. And uh, I think this is also important to mention because he, it's really fantastic to, to, to see the, the collective dynamics uh, he initiated. And it's uh, also one of Fiscality among others. Thank you and bravo, Olivier. Um, I would first like to express my gratitude to the ECPR and its members for awarding me this prize. It's a tremendous honor to be the recipient of it for 2022, especially when I consider the professional achievements of the previous recipients. But this being said, and beyond the honor given to me, I would like to underline that this prize, to my eyes, comes less to reward a personal career than a collective undertaking. In fact, I have never considered my work as an author's work, which should lead to the construction of a proper and original achievement. On the contrary, I have always thought and continue to think that a political sociology encoded in the thickness of reality 
and thus in the collection and processing of rich empirical data could only be achieved through collective undertakings, whether they take the form of intellectual exchanges within a research community or of direct collaborations in research projects, for example, or co-writing. From this point of view, I'm infinitely in debt to the colleagues with whom I've worked and published closely in Europe and elsewhere, as well as to the research laboratories in which I've always found great stimulation with particular emphasis on GERM, a research group hosted by the French Association of Political Sciences Science in the 90s, then on the Research Center on Political Action, CRAPUL, and the LIVES Center for the Study of Life Course, the two being based at the University of Lausanne. This remark draws attention to an obvious fact. Sociological imagination, methodological innovation, and advances in scientific activity can only develop under favorable conditions with material and human support and academic freedom. All of these things are being called into questions or threatened in many places to the point that we can only worry about the continuing scarcity of positions in the field of social and human sciences and the precariousness of young researchers, in addition to the deterioration of working conditions, which is most often linked to the attrition of financial resources, but is also to be related to a deepening disinterest of political elites for social sciences. From this point of view, one can say that the University of Lausanne and its Faculty of Social and Political Sciences have been for me a privileged place of life and study throughout the last 20 years. Finally, I would like to add that this prize is also for me the reward of a long-term collective investment in contributing to the restoring of social movement studies to its rightful place within French speaking political science. I have participated with a small handful of colleagues in its redevelopment through a whole series of decompartmentalizing operations. At a theoretical sorry, and epistemological level, by establishing a dialogue between the American and European literature, and the approaches inspired by the critical sociology of Pierre Bourdieu, but also by Max Weber and Norbert Elias. But also by making the rich legacy of symbolic interactionism serve the analysis of political mobilizations while enriching it with new statistical methods. By expanding our research interest to the study of information and communication technologies, and their effects on protest movements and individual commitments. Regarding this point, I can only feel very grateful to my colleagues at the Life Center in Lausanne, who helped me tremendously to collect and analyze big data from the activity on virtual social networks like Facebook, and also to use sequence analyzing in order to bring time as a variable in the study of activist lives. Last but not least, by shifting the gaze from the usual suspects of social movement studies to other skies, the Middle East, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, but also other types of movements like extreme right-wing militancy, so-called spontaneous uprisings, or more recently, the Yellow Vests. And finally, other types of modes of action, first and foremost, more or less discrete resistances to authority and at the other end of the spectrum, revolutionary phenomena. There are still a lot of dead angles and shortcomings in social movement analysis. It will be to the young generation to reduce it and help to a better understanding of political activism and social movements trajectories. Considering the increasing interest in these questions and the very high quality of research produced recently in the field by young scholars, I can only be optimistic about the future of our social movement community in Europe. And I end here. And again, thank you for awarding me this prize. <laughs>